Type 2 diabetes is often painted as a disease of the obese, with an innuendo that, well, it's somehow deserved. The person let themselves go. The default response to the problem is a command to lose some weight. But not all type 2 diabetics are fat. So this advice can land like a wet blanket on someone who isn't visibly fat. To be honest, it's often not that helpful for someone who is visibly fat. But I digress. The plight of the skinny diabetic is often ignored. And for the record, it's estimated that one in six people diagnosed with type 2 diabetes have a BMI less than 27. Now, in this situation, the lose weight advice is often not given. Dietary advice typically concentrates on eliminating so-called offending foods, something that when practiced can actually be counterproductive. But this needs to change. Research from Newcastle University in the UK suggests if you lean and diabetic, losing weight should still be on your agenda because fatness is relative. It's been postulated that thanks to genetics, we all have a fat threshold. That is in a maximum amount of fat that we can comfortably carry. And that metabolic troubles manifest when this level is crossed. For some, the fat threshold is enormous. For others, it's tiny. Join us for this episode of Better Body Chemistry TV as we explore the science behind the fat threshold hypothesis. Better Body Chemistry TV is brought to you by Dr. Sandy, a scientist turned gremlin buster helping you battle sugar gremlins, heifer lumps, and other health horribles through better body chemistry. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health. For the record, the fat cells with the problem are not actually the cells implicated in the pathology. Belly fat is blamed, but the reason fat is accumulating in the belly is because the fat cells meant to be squirreling away supplies for a rainy day aren't accepting fat deliveries. The body resorts to plan B, storing the fat in other places. When it's stored in the liver and pancreas, metabolic challenges follow. Now, an offshoot of this idea is that if you're currently metabolically healthy and obese, you're just not fat enough. And if you continue to pack on the pounds, it's just a matter of time before you break. Now, this can be true, but it's not a fact. Attempts to scientifically demonstrate this concept have fallen flat. It's good news for some. It means that obesity does not equal insulin resistance. Of course, having said that, excess fat can be tough on other body parts. So carrying excess weight is not ideal. On the flip side, it's bad news for some. You can be normal weight in inverted commas and be metabolically challenged. This would be me. I had a metabolic meltdown with a BMI of just over 25. Normal is 18 to 25. Skinny fat is the term that is euphemistically applied. These are people who on the outside look normal weight, but inside they're carrying extra pounds, especially around the belly, that is visceral fat. This is captured well in the CT scan of pediatric oncology patients. The red represents skeletal muscle, the blue subcutaneous adipose tissue, and the yellow visceral adipose tissue. The person in the middle is skinny fat. You can see the blue layer is relatively thin. That is normal, but there's an awful lot of yellow inside the body. And it's the yellow bits that are the problem in someone who is skinny fat. Falling into this category 
often puts you on a worse health trajectory than someone who is genuinely fat. One of the reasons, you're often flying under the radar. Unlike in the obviously fat, the medical fraternity is not expecting trouble, so they don't advise weight loss. Should trouble be found, prescription meds are the go-to solution. The thinking is, well, there's nothing that can be done to fix the situation. Actually, there is something you can do to improve your metabolic health. This is what happened to a group of normal weight people suffering from type 2 diabetes when they participated in the reversal of type 2 diabetes upon normalization of energy intake study, which took place between May 2018 and November 2021. A little background about these peeps. There were 20 in total, and they all had a diagnosis of type 2 diabetes, which was being managed with diet and drugs, not insulin. Genetic tests confirmed that none of them were suffering from monogenic or autoimmune diabetes. This was the clinical profile at the start of the study. They were normal weight. You are considered to be overweight if you have a BMI greater than 25. But they did have expanded bellies. You can see this in their waist circumference. And their blood work showed dyslipidemia. The values in red are considered normal. Now the ones to watch are triglycerides and HDL. LDL cholesterol, although often higher in someone with metabolic syndrome, is not actually a marker of insulin resistance. Two cycles of dieting helped them lose their bellies and corrected the lipid profile, an effect which was still seen a year later. But the study is about reversing diabetes. So the most interesting numbers are these ones. Both the HbA1c and the fasting blood glucose had dropped back down to normal. Yep, effectively these guys were cured. I know what you want to know now. What diet did they follow? Well, they pretty much starved. For a period of two to four weeks, they followed an extremely low calorie diet, consuming a meal replacement formula which provided them with 600 kilocalories a day. We typically eat 2,000 to 2,500 kilocalories a day. This was then followed by four to six weeks of normal eating. The diet that was recommended was a Mediterranean style eating pattern. For one person, one round of this torture was enough to move the needle and get them back to normal. Most of the participants needed two sessions. A few needed three. The study suggests fat thresholds do exist. And if you lucked out on the genetic lottery, lightening the load by losing some of your secret fat can make a difference to your metabolic health. Yay! A week or two of severely cutting your calorie intake is probably something we can all do. The important thing, make sure it's short and sharp. Don't drag it out. Dragging your calorie restriction out over an extended period of time can backfire. The take-home message from this research, fat thresholds are real. Thin or fat, if you're dancing on the edge of being diabetic, go on diet for a week or two, even if you think you have nothing to lose. You might just gain back your metabolic health, and this is priceless, because being insulin resistant puts you at an increased risk of everything. And if the idea of starving for two weeks puts you into a panic, you can achieve the same result with the slow and steady approach of candy flossing. The extra fat might not fly off quite as fast, but little by little it will move out and you'll develop a sustainable lifestyle that will keep the weight off. Download the Willpower Report. It's free to learn more and begin the journey today to creating better body chemistry and better health.
interested in discovering more ways to create better body chemistry or need a little help getting your body chemistry on track, visit our website at www.betterbodychemistry.com. Browse our library or enroll in one of our courses or programs. The advice is simple to follow and based on real science, not hype. Know someone who is type 2 diabetic, lean or fat? Share this video with them so they know making the effort to lose the secret fat that has pushed them over the edge is so worth it because fat thresholds are real. And if this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you catch future episodes of Better Body Chemistry TV. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health.